Today's episode is about tests on Angular Dart applications. If you missed the first two screencasts in this series, you can find them on dartcast.com. Also, if you are an AngularJS developer who wants to get into Angular Dart, check out this article. This screencast is about testing. In particular, we are going to look into unit testing models, unit testing services, mocking HTTP requests and testing components. And as before, we are going to use the Angular Dart sample application I put together, which you can find on GitHub. Alright, let's start with unit testing models. Since Angular doesn't prescribe anything for implementing models, those don't depend on the framework. As a result, their tests don't depend on Angular either, as shown here. Now let's look into unit testing services. I'm going to use users repository as an example. As you can see, it depends on the HTTP service provided by Angular. The way it works is, first, it makes a request to fetch the data about all the registered users. Second, it extracts the data from the response. Finally, it constructs a list of users out of the response. Let's look at a few ways of testing it. First, without any Angular helpers. Here I define the test double that can be used instead of the HTTP service. In addition, I define this fake HTTP response class, which is used in the test. I'm setting up my stop service over here to return this hash when the request is made. Then I'm asserting that the user has the right name and status. This test has no dependencies on Angular, which I personally prefer. But there is another way to test the same functionality, in a more integration fashion, using Angular helpers. I have an example right here. There are a bunch of helper functions that Angular provides for writing these kind of tests. Here I'm using two of them, setup injector and teardown injector. You have to call them to be able to register components with the injector. Similar to AngularJS, Angular Dart provides the module helper that does that. In this test, I'm registering user's repository, which I'm going to test, and mock HTTP backend, which is provided by Angular. Similarly to AngularJS, the Dart version gives you the inject helper you can use to obtain all the needed services. I'm injecting mock HTTP backend so I can stab out the request. And after that, I'm invoking the functions and examining the results. It's all straightforward. All the helpers used in this test are standard Angular helpers, except for this one. As you can see, it takes two parameters, a future waiting for an HTTP response and a callback expecting the result of this future. This is the callback and it makes a few assertions about the user. A few words on how this helper works. First, calling HTTP.flash flashes all pending requests which in our case will resolve this future. The only issue is that the request will be registered only in the next event loop iteration. That's why I have to wrap it into timer.run. Expect async zero is here, so the unit test framework will wait for this callback to be run. This helper removes some of the boilerplate from the tests and make them more readable. Now you know how to test services with 
and without Angular helpers. The last thing we will look at is testing components. I will use the agenda item component as an example. In particular, switching between the show and edit modes. Once again, I am setting up the injector over here and then using the module helper to register my component. I am also registering the test band service, which provides a bunch of handy functions for testing components and directives. One interesting thing here is this load templates helper. To show you what it does, let me comment it out and run the tests. I get an error saying that the agenda item component couldn't download the corresponding template. If I open the Karma configuration file, you'll see that I'm actually serving templates. The problem is that Angular is using wrong URLs. To work around the issue, I wrote this helper. It goes and prefetches all the needed templates and puts them into the cache using the URL used by the tested components. This helper returns a future that I returned from the setup handler. Returning this future is important, because the unit test library ensures that the future is resolved before the tests are run. Let's run the tests again. Now, after we've learned about downloading templates, let's take a look at this test. It does very little. It renders the component, clicks on this button to switch to the edit mode, and finally, check that this input element is present, indicating that the mode was switched. Though it does very little, it shows the two things needed to test a component. The HTML fragment creating the component and some scope data. The only interesting bit here is the compile component function. It creates a new scope, compiles the HTML, and then calls the provided function with the shadow root of the component. A few things I'd like to point out. First, since the result of the compilation is available only in the next event loop iteration, I have to wrap this code into timer.run. Second, I need to call digest to actually apply all the directives inside the component. Overall, Testing components is slightly more complicated than I'd like it to be. But it's quite easy to abstract all this stuff away by introducing such helpers as load templates or compile component. Wrapping up. Today, we looked into testing Angular Dart applications, in particular, testing models, testing services, and writing integration tests for services and components. If you found it interesting, check out the repo with the sample application shown in this screencast. Thanks for watching.